Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be painting the Hellbringer Drake from Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. I was sent this model for free from Parabella More Games, and I'm very excited to jump into it. So let's go ahead and get started. To get this model ready for painting, I primed the body of the drake using Rust-Oleum Satin Charcoal Gray Primer. I then used Lead Belcher Spray Primer from Citadel to paint the saddle. We're going to start this model off using Sotec Green as the base color for all of the scaly flesh. We're going to use Kislev Flesh as the base color for the belly and any of the armored scales that are on the model. It's going to take multiple coats. Make sure you do thin coats rather than thick coats because you don't want to leave ugly brush strokes on the flesh of your model. Once both base colors are in place, we're going to shade all of the flesh using Reichland Flesh Shade. You can go nice and heavy on this shade or you can go light. It's really up to you. It doesn't make too much of a difference at this step. Once you've allowed your shade to dry, we're going to take a mixture of two parts Temple Guard Blue and one part Thunderhawk Blue. We're going to use this to highlight all of the skin. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you follow the wrinkles that are sculpted into the skin, and make sure that you only highlight the raised surfaces. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to use one part Kislev Flesh and one part Averlin Sunset. We're going to paint this on the neck, the tail, and any parts of the yellow flesh that aren't the armored scales. For the armored scales, we're going to take Averlin Sunset by itself, and we're going to paint this on all of those scales. And just be careful not to get this on the flesh that we did in the previous step. We're then going to highlight the edges of all those yellow scales using Uriel Yellow. We are focusing on just getting the edges of the scales. With that all done, we're going to begin painting the claws on the drake. We're going to use Castellan Green as the base color for this. We're also going to do the spikes that are on the back of his front legs. We're going to shade all of the claws using Athonian Camo Shade, and it's good to go nice and heavy on this, especially if you let it pool on the bottom of each of the claws. Once that shade is dried, we're going to edge highlight each of the claws and the spikes on the back of his legs using Death Guard Green. Now we're going to paint the inside of the mouth and the tongue using Gene Stealer Purple. Now this is a little bit hard to show on camera, but you just want to make sure that you don't get this paint on any of the flesh on the outside of the mouth. With that base purple in place, we're now going to wash the entire interior of the mouth using Contrast Volupus Pink. And I went ahead and let this pool nice and heavily, especially towards the back of the mouth. Next, we're going to take more gas bone, and we're going to paint each of the teeth. Now, you notice that uh, the rest of the drake has magically painted himself. I actually forgot to do this step until the very end of painting this project. We're going to shade the teeth using Seraphim Sepia. Normally I would do a darker shade, but for this particular project I wanted the teeth to be a little bit brighter and less brown. Once the shade on the teeth is dried, we're going to highlight each of the teeth using the Shabti Bone. We're going to start by taking and starting at the base of each tooth and drawing straight lines up the tooth. We're going to draw three or four different lines per tooth. With the body of the drake all done, it's time to start working on the saddle. We're going to start by taking Rune Lord Brass, and we're going to use this to base coat the cannons and all the structural parts of the saddle. We're going to begin working on the armor panels of the saddle and on the drake. We're going to use Screaming Bell as the base color for this. Thank you. 
Our next step is to take Reichland Flesh Shade and wash this over all of the parts that we painted with the brass color earlier. And you can go ahead and go heavy on this. The heavier you go, the more it's going to turn this metal to a somewhat red tint. Now we're going to do a fun armor technique that I picked up a couple years ago. We're going to take Carber Crimson and we're going to do three relatively thin coats of this wash over the armor panels. The more coats you do, the more red your armor is going to turn. While we're waiting for our third coat of wash to dry, we're going to take Canoptic Alloy and we're going to dry brush this on all the brass parts of the weapon, especially focusing on the edges where the paint is going to catch and where we might expect there to be more wear and tear on the metal. Going back to the armor panels, we're now going to take Psychorax Bronze. We're going to use this to very carefully highlight the edges of each of the scratches and dents that's on the armor panels. We can also add in a few random scratches of our own as we do this. Now we're going to go through with Lead Belcher and we're going to pick out the ridge on the helmet of the Drake, as well as any of the trim that needs to be cleaned up around the armor panels on the saddle. Now we're going to paint the stone chair that's on the saddle. We're going to base coat this with Mechanicus Standard Gray. Just be careful not to get this on the metallic parts of the saddle. Once we're done with that, we're going to take Balthazar Gold and we're going to paint these pipes that are coming off of the back of the saddle, as well as the smokestacks that have the fire coming out of them on the top of the saddle. Now we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to wash this over the stone chair and any of the lead belcher parts or the Balthazar gold parts that we've painted in the last few steps. Once the shade is dried, we're going to take Wraith Bone and we're going to dry brush this all over the stone chair. For the glowing parts of the model, we're going to begin by base coating them with squig orange. This includes the edge of the barrel, as well as these orbs that are on the back of the cannons. Once that first orange is down, we're going to take Wild Rider Red and we're going to use this to highlight over the previous coat, but we're not going all the way up to the edge of what we did before. While that red is still wet, we're going to take Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to paint this over the red, mixing it in slightly. Now this is a very basic way to do the glowing effect. I didn't want to spend too much time or get too fancy with this. Once our orange colors have dried around the barrel, we're going to take Nolan Oil and we're just going to kind of glob this around behind the orange on the barrel. And this is meant to give the appearance of just grime, dirt, and ash that has built up on the outside of the barrel. Now let's focus on the crew for the Drake. We're going to start with Jokero Orange. We're going to use this as the base color for all the skin on the dwarves. To shade the skin, we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to just do a fairly thin but even coat of this over the skin of the dwarves. Now we're going to do a layer of highlighting on the flesh using Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to just focus on all the most raised surfaces, and we're not going to put any of this in the recesses because we want to maintain that definition of the muscles that was given to us by the shade. Now we're going to do a second layer of highlighting, this time using Kislev Flesh, and we're doing pretty much the same thing as before, but we're going even more inward on each of the raised muscle sections, so we're not painting all the way up to the edge of what we did before. Most of the rest of the painting on the crew is the same as painting the armor on the drake, so to save time, I'm not going to walk you through that whole process again. Just go back and make sure you repeat the same process as we did before. Now we're going to paint the flames on the model. We're going to start by using Averland Sunset. On the dwarves, we're going to paint this starting at the base of their hair, moving upward about halfway up the hair. We're going to do a similar thing on the flames coming out of the smokestacks. 
Our next step is to take Jokero Orange. We're gonna start about halfway up the flames and we're going to paint this the rest of the distance up the flames. Just make sure you don't completely cover the yellow because you want there to be a transition. Our next color on the flames will be Wild Rider Red. We're gonna do this just towards the very ends of the flames. To blend all of these colors together, we're going to use Cassandora Yellow and wash this over all of the flames. Finally, at the very end of all this, we're going to take Noln Oil and we're going to wash this just at the very tips of the flame. This is meant to represent the smoke that is mingled within the flames. And with that, we have finished our Hellbringer Drake. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, if you were paying attention, there were two, maybe three things that I painted on this model that I didn't show in the video. Go ahead and see if you can identify what those are and tell me in the comments. As always, have a great day, and we'll catch you in the next one.